So, tell me more about yourself, Michael said to Victor. I would like to hear more about your early life, before the change, when you were still fully human. Also about the struggles you had shortly after the change, because that might help me in mind. Very well. First, I will tell you that the change will be painful. Very painful, but the pain will pass, Victor replied. I often think about the past, not to dwell on it or wallow, mind you. No, I feel that there are lessons in our mistakes, lessons in our pain. If we can see those lessons and learn from them, we become stronger, smarter, not only for ourselves, but for those around us as well. I can see that. Especially if you can't die, I'm sure there's plenty of time to think about past mistakes. Lord knows I've found myself doing that a lot in recent months. Though I suppose I did my fair share of wallowing in that, Michael said with a slight chuckle. I've been keeping a chronicle of my life since the transformation. My memories are vivid, so I do not really have the need to write it all down, but I feel it helps to process some of the teachings my past has given me. <laughs> My room is a bigger library than what we're sitting in, most of which are my own books. I digress. Where exactly would you like me to start? Would you hear of my childhood, early adult, or would you like me to simply skip to the good parts and tell you of my ravaging thirst for blood and foolishly hiding in the mud and caves from daylight? Asked Victor. Uh, you could start with your early childhood if you'd like. Whatever you want, Victor. I'd be glad to listen and learn more about you, Michael answered. Very well. As I said before, I was born in Lancaster. This was during the Tudor era. The lordship or high sheriff of the time often changed like the wind, at times going back and forth between a couple of people. I recall that Sir Edmund Trafford had a position many times as I grew. Life was never easy at the time, though my family may have had it better than most. My father was a baker, as I said. It would seem that we still did not have vast amounts of food. We had chickens I would attend to daily. All of the chores around the house would be my responsibility because I was the first child my father and my mother would have. And as I said before, my mother died in childbirth. My father never remarried for some reason, and he never once spoke to me about my mother other than to tell me she died bringing me into this world, so I best not shame her with my life. With this, Victor paused for a moment, glancing downward towards the fire with a look that was a mix between pain and reflection. Then he smiled slightly and continued. I never even knew what she looked like. Of course, there were no photographs back then, and we were far too poor to have any portraits done. But, as I was saying, the chores were my responsibility, so I had done them. When I was reaching my teenage years, I met a girl, Catherine. Ah, uh, Catherine. The one woman I would ever truly love, and the one who had fooled me. The one who offered me as a sacrifice. I was about sixteen when I first met her. She was beautiful, a smooth, gentle face long light brown hair and deep green eyes that seemed to beckon you towards her. She was kind and sweet to me, while at the same time played hard to get for many years, sneaking kisses here or there but never allowing me more than that. By the time I was twenty-three my father had fallen ill. They claimed that his humors were out of balance and they had bled him and used other practices of the time in an attempt to heal him. I now know what he had was influenza that turned into pneumonia. His life ended with him drowning on the fluids that had filled his lungs. I buried him myself, using the little money I had to pay for his coffin. It was now my job to carry on with the family business as the baker. Catherine seemed to show up more often after my father's passing. A change was slowly happening over her, though at the time I did not see it. She was grooming me, preparing me to become the sacrifice, though she would lead me on for years longer. I was thirty-two when she invited me to join her in secret to the forest with promises of romance and love. By this time, I was completely smitten with her and thought she felt the same way. She led me to a clearing in the forest where she had set up a small picnic with breads, cheeses, and wine laid upon a blanket. It was lovely and very romantic. 
and secluded. There was a light knocking on the door, followed by the same young man who had awoken Michael earlier. He brought with him a cart with various fruits, pastries, and drinks on it. He nodded his head towards Victor, then Michael, and Victor said, Thank you, Peter. That is all for now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Peter replied, and he turned and left the room. Here you are, Michael. I arranged for some breakfast to be brought. I'm sure you are very hungry. Besides, you certainly will want to enjoy the taste of food now. Once you become one of us, it'll never taste the same. Especially sweets. Meat, however, tastes even better, Victor said. Michael hadn't really thought about it, though now that the platters were laid before him, he noticed his stomach growling. It had been ages since he had had a proper meal. He grabbed a serving plate and began to fill it while saying, Yes, thank you, Victor. I am very hungry. But please, continue with your story. You said the girl had lured you into the forest? Yes, Victor said. She had lured me into this forest with the prospect of love. She poured me some wine in a small wooden cup and I drank. Soon after that, the world began to spin, my mind swam, and everything went black. When I awoke, I was tied down, surrounded by flames and people in the nude dancing around me and chanting. They were naked, dancing around a fire. They had strange symbols carved in their flesh. Some were old, some had unmasked, and then I seen Catherine dancing among them in some sort of trance, chanting words that were indecipherable to my ears. There was a drum beat in the background just outside the light flickering from the fire. I tried to struggle, tried to call out to Catherine to help me, but I was tied and gagged and unable to fight, still dizzy and weak from the drug wine Catherine had given me. Then the chanting reached a climax pitch, and it all suddenly stopped as they dropped to their knees and bowed down towards me. Victor paused for a moment and looked at Michael as if to see if he would speak. Michael intently listened and beckoned for him to continue. Then I heard a low growl come from my right side. There, coming forward from the darkness, were two red eyes that burned like hellfire. It made its way into the firelight and revealed that it was a massive black dog, its head low, still growling as it came into view. And then it spoke. I, Baal, have answered your signs. Is this the sacrifice that lay before me? It said with a low rumble of a voice. The group replied with, Yes, my lord. In unison, and the beast from hell continued forward. It changed as it did so into a mix between beast and man. Twisting horns protruded from its head upward, eyes still glowing that haunting deep red. Its body still covered with the matted black fur as it had when it first appeared as the hound. He came to me and smiled down at me, exposing a mouthful of sharp fangs. My eyes grew wide and I violently tried to struggle against my bindings, but to no avail. His smile widened as he spoke once more. You and I shall become one. I shall feast upon your life for all eternity. He then lunged down onto me and bit hard and deep into my shoulder. The bite felt like flames ripping through my flesh, but then an icy chill ran through my veins. I could feel it pulsing through my body, freezing me yet, burning me at the same time. It felt as though every part of me would explode at once. I screamed, oh, did I scream. I'm sure they could have heard my tormented cries of suffering for miles. As this boiling ice burnt its way through my very essence, the demon turned into a sort of mist and was entering into my body. Oh, Michael the Pain, you will feel this pain. When I change you, you will feel the pain of every fiber of your being being shredded murdered and transformed. As the last of his misty form entered my body, I lay there, convulsing, shaking, unable to scream any longer. I could feel death coming. It felt as though my insides were dying one by one, but the pain was subsiding. Finally, I lost consciousness. 
Victor grew silent and a visible shiver ran through his body. He blankly stared towards the fire with a look that was a mixture of anger and fear. His life had been stolen from him. He was forced to take part in this unholy ritual and forced to cope with the consequences thereof. He suddenly blinked hard and looked back at Michael. I am truly sorry, Michael, he said, but that will be the end of this tale for tonight. We still have much to do to perform and celebrate your death and rebirth. Please, go back to your room for now, and after the preparations are complete, I will send Peter to summon you for the ceremony. All right, Michael replied and stood up. Hey, Victor? Yes? Thank you for sharing that experience. Also, for letting me know how painful it'll be. My decision remains the same. <laughs>